This is Second Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 7. And that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet ask long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Brak the Yahweh, brak the Yahweh Shai, brak the Yahweh, brak the Yahweh Shai, brak the Yahweh, brak the Yahweh Shai. All praise, honor, and infinite glory goes to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Merkakadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel consists of you so called blacks. Hispanics, and Native Americans. You make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel today. And if you do not look like a typical black, Hispanic, or Native American, you can still be an Israelite through your father's seed line. If your father's seed line goes back to an Israelite man, and your spirit bears witness, so your spirit's proof, it is evidence that you are an Israelite because you are drawn to this 100% word. Okay, the 100% doctrine comes out of the camp of Great Millstone. So you're drawn to this word, you're sincere, genuine, you have the gift of faith, and you believe in this message, and you fit the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I'm the brother Zakar from the Great Millstone Plain Tables Camp in Philadelphia, PA. And the topic of this video is going to be the wisest and richest king ever. The wisest and richest king ever in history. So, in this world we call life, okay, people know a lot of rich individuals you have bill gates you have jeff bezos you got the rothschild family the rockefeller family the dupont family okay you got the bush family all right you have rich you have millionaire millionaires billionaires okay and then you have conquerors in history okay who had wealth, Genghis Khan, okay, Alexander, all right, the great, all right, Caesar. You have a lot of rulers in this world, okay, throughout history. But the richest and wisest king in history, okay, it's not Donald Trump, okay, the smartest person to ever live was not Einstein, okay? The richest king and wisest was King Solomon. And you may not believe the Bible, okay? But the Bible is real. The Bible is just a history book, okay? It's just history of what you call life. Because you... During social studies class, history class, you have textbooks. 
And it talks about history of leaders, okay? Napoleon, okay? King George. It talks about histories of leaders. It gives certain events that happened during that time period. And then a lot of people choose to believe that, okay? They choose to believe it. But when it comes to the Bible, it's like the Bible is a fairy tale book because certain things in the Bible you don't usually see on the day to day, like splitting the Red Sea, which Moses did. Okay, walking on water, which who the world calls Jesus Christ did. Real name being Yahweh Shai. Okay. Rebuking the sea. Okay. Which the Lord did. Who the world calls Jesus Christ. Real name Yahweh Shai. Causing the wind, all right, and the sea to be calm. Healing people. Raising from the dead. Joshua allowing the sun, okay, to stand still. These acts you don't usually see. So, is it a fairy tale? Is it fantasy? Is it something that is just a made up story? No, it's not. The Bible is not a made up story, okay? Even though a lot of people will change the Bible and add on to it and take from it okay but this book is the most has the most key knowledge to save you all right from the times are about to come to this world okay and the wisest and richest king in history was king solomon okay and he did actually exist, all right? And the reason why he was the wisest and richest king is because who the world calls God, he made him to be, okay? Because Solomon was righteous, all right? Just like I read in the beginning, Solomon didn't ask for the life of his enemies. He didn't ask for wealth or honor, nor riches, okay? nor for long life. He asked for wisdom to govern, all right, the Israelites. So the Heavenly Father gave him wisdom and knowledge and riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings that have, that have been before thee, okay? So my next precept is be 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 23, okay? So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. When it says heart, it's talking about his mind. Okay, not the actual organ beating in flesh. And they brought every man his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules a rate year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he had bestowed in the cities for chariots and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen, yam, the king's merchants received the linen yam at the price. So King Solomon had a lot of resources, okay, because the Heavenly Father blessed him, okay, because as the nation of Israel, the more righteous you are, listening to the Most High, following his rules, guidelines, okay, the more he blesses you, okay. The secret to success, all right, a lot of people in this world, they strive to be business people in business, strive to get riches, okay? But the true secret to everlasting success is being a righteous Israelite, okay? Following the law, statutes, and commandments of God, okay? Because the riches of this world, the people who are extinct, who are in the high place in this world, their riches are not going to come to anything, 
for the time that's about to come to this world. Because we're living in the last days. All right? Their riches are not going to come to anything. Okay? It's not going to... It's not going to save them from the Most High's wrath and judgment. Okay? But a righteous Israelite is storing up treasures in for the next kingdom which is about to come. What the world calls heaven. Okay? Because he's listening to God. Rehearsing the righteous acts. Alright? So as an Israelite, as a so-called black Hispanic Native American listening to this, okay? Riches, wisdom, okay? Is given to you by the Most High, okay? Not of your own self. Even though you may think you're controlling yourself, but the Most High is controlling you. Because your going is of the Lord, your path, okay? That's of the Lord. And true wisdom, which is fearing the Lord, because the beginning of wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay? And fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the true wisdom. Okay? To fear the Lord so you can do what he tells you to do. Okay? So you can please him and follow the commandments showing your faith. Because that's love according to the Bible. Okay? That's true wisdom. That's going to save you and give you a chance for salvation and mercy. Other than carnal riches, cars, and um, resources, okay, that the a lot of people in this world worship, okay, because King Solomon he he didn't worship his riches, okay, he didn't worship his riches, all right, he asked for wisdom first to govern, all right, the Israelites, all right, so wisdom is the key, okay. This is 1 Kings 4 and 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the sea shore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country in all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Heman the Chokol, and Darda, the sons of Maho, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop, and springeth out of the wall. So like that springeth out of the wall. He, sp he spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth. So different kings, different foreign nations, their kings coming to seek and hear Solomon's wisdom. That's how high he was. Okay. All right. B bringing gifts. Okay. Which had, which had heard of his wisdom. Okay. Now, if you were to check up King Solomon on Google, Okay, you'll see pictures like this, right? King Solomon, right? You got, you'll see a so-called Caucasian man, right? How the world calls today, so-called white man, right? You see? But the thing is, King Solomon was not a so-called Caucasian man because the thing about how... The current rulers of this world work. A lot of the famous, most smartest rulers, they like to paint as themselves. Okay. David, King Solomon, Moses, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Okay. Those men who I just said, Moses, King Solomon, David, and who the world calls Jesus Christ. They weren't so-called Caucasian men, okay? They weren't, okay? King Solomon was a so-called black man. And this is Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5 to prove it. 
I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So it says, I am black, but calmly. So straight right here to the point, it says, I am black. Okay. So, but someone may say, what black is that talking about? All right. How do you know it's actually talking about dark skin and being black? If you read verse six, it says, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun have looked upon me. Okay. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Okay. So King Solomon was what the world called that phrase that the world says black and beautiful. Okay. Calmly is beautiful. Okay. You get the word calmly. Let's just get it real quick. Calmly. It says, typically of a woman, pleasant to look at, attractive. Okay. So it says typically of a woman, but for this circumstance, we're talking about a man. It says right here, handsome, pretty, beautiful, nice looking, good looking, attractive. Okay. So handsome. All right. It says beautiful as well. So if you go back, it says, I am black, but calmly. So I am black, but beautiful. Okay. That saying in the world. Okay. I'm black and beautiful. Black excellence. Okay. King Solomon was not a so-called Caucasian man. Okay. It says, look not upon me because I am black because the sun have looked upon me. Okay. These images right here are just lies, okay? That was pushed forth by the deceiver, okay? Who's ruling this earth? The devil, okay? The word devil simply means deceiver, all right? Who deceived a lot of people in this world. And that's the so-called Caucasian race, chiefly the elites, all right? The head of the Caucasian race, okay? The elites who rule this world. The 1% shadow government, okay? Illuminati, all right? The elite banking families, okay? They're the devil according to the Bible, okay? King Solomon, more, a more accurate depiction is this right here, okay? Dark skin. I am black but beautiful, okay? This is a more accurate depiction of what he would look like. I'm not saying it's the exact tone, okay? I'm just saying that's more accurate because he's he wasn't a so-called Caucasian man, okay? And he was the wisest and richest king, all right, in history, okay? Not these top CEOs right now, okay? Not Mansa Munsa, okay? The king of Mali, all right? He was not Genghis Khan, okay? Not Caesar, not Alexander the Great, okay? It was King Solomon. The Heavenly Father was with him, okay? And he was a righteous Israelite. And with his reign was a period of peace for the Israelites, okay? 40 years of peace after, okay, his father, David. So he wasn't a so-called Caucasian man, all right? The Heavenly Father, because he was righteous, was with him. The Heavenly Father is with those who listen to him, okay? That's the key, all right? It doesn't matter how much, how tall you are, how much you boast about yourself, Okay, a true king, a true leader is one who listens to God. Okay, the Heavenly Father. And only Israelites, only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to have that spirit today. Okay, to rehearse the righteous acts. So if you're, if you're drawn to this word, okay, this message, repent to the Heavenly Father and change your ways. Because destruction is coming to this world. All right, the whole world is not going to be destroyed, but... America is going to be completely decimated during World War III.
in other parts of the globe is going to be completely it's going to be jacked up as well and you need protection by the heavenly father for these times okay that protection is always going to only going to come if you build up your faith and believe in him all right and you show your faith by your actions being an israelite okay god's chosen people so lord willing this video is edifying all praise, honor, and infinite glory goes to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rekakadash, Shalom, Yasharallah, Shalom.